and welcome to Film Ireland, where we'll be focusing on some of the people involved in the Irish film industry. We'll be going on location with writer-director David Gleeson on the set of his new film, The Front Line. And we'll also be speaking with actor Eric Ebene. Later on, we'll be interviewing one of Ireland's most recognised actors, Patrick Bergen. But first, let's turn our attention to one actor who certainly isn't afraid of bearing all. You told me you saved that money. I told you I earned it. Who cares? You didn't tell me where it really came from. Why should I? It's got nothing to do with you. I suddenly find out I'm living with a drug dealer. It's got nothing to do with me. Jesus Christ, how long have you been away from home? Weeks. You turn into fucking Scarface. Hi, Alan. How are you doing? So, you've worked with many fabulous actors. Um, what have you learned from them? I suppose, from all of them that I've worked with, they always find out something different from everyone, you know? I've worked with so many people in theatre as well as in film that the people in theatre, I suppose, gave me the basis of the technical side of what I needed to learn. And then the people in film, it's more small things that you learn off them and you see how they work behind the scenes before they do the shot and, and that type of thing, you know? Yeah. So Love is a Drug, um, it was very successful, did you think it would be? I, I think it, all, it took us all from, by surprise, you know, it was, it was something that had been done before and unfortunately hadn't been as successful and we were all a bit worried with it, you know, because especially with RTE dramas, they tend to be slightly conservative and Love is a Drug kind of pushed the boat out a bit and I think that worked for it, you know, because people are kind of prepared for that now and, and are ready to see something that's slightly more risky. And, and just slightly more high energy. I think a lot of the Irish dramas that have been around just tend to be quite mundane, and I think Love is a Drug kind of lifted the bar in, in, in that respect, you know? So how do you find um, doing scenes of nudity, Alan? Do you want me to get naked now? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> if it's necessary for the script, then I've no problem with it. I, th I think that doing the scenes can be kind of amusing, normally because the men always tend to be absolutely naked. And um, with a crew of 50 people laughing at you, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to keep, keep, uh, keep, keep your concentration. I'm now on my way into the studio to catch up with some of the stars in the front line, such as Eric Ebene, Gerard McSorley and the director, David Gleeson. <laughs> Uh, it's basically about this guy, um, Joe Yumba. He's granted um, asylum in Ireland and he gets a job in the bank as a security guard and uh, then he gets coerced by a really nasty criminal, criminal gang, to be the inside man on a bank robbery. But Joe turns out to be much cleverer than anyone ever anticipated. And he turns the tables on the gang and the police who are investigating uh, and then turns out to be someone else entirely. While I was down in Ardmore Studios, I also got to speak with Eric Ebene, who plays Joe Yumba in The Front Line. What's it like working with the director, David Gleeson? No, David Gleeson is pretty funny because he's quite dead back, yeah. but he knows what he wants. So, we're not wasting that much time. Yeah. And it, Anyway, we don't have that much time to, to waste because we only have five weeks to shoot. And mm -hmm. it's pretty short because, you know, in, for a feature film, it's not... It's not enough, but he did his preparation before, and he's fine. So we just bang, 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 bang. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you play the, the main role. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? His name is Joe Yumba. He's a Congolese refugee in, in Dublin. Yeah. So tell us just a little bit about him, um, the character. Of Joe Yumba. My thing is Joe Yumba. He just lives in Dublin, and uh, he's working as as a bank security guard, and. Uh, with these guys from the, you know, dubbing gangsters or whatever, so they they don't they want him to have them robbing the bank, and they just kidnap his kids and his wife. Well, it's a thriller, but it's also got elements of, um, you know, it's also got a very strong dramatic elements, you know, about what it means to be a refugee and um, what it means to feel isolated from your background and everything. And I lived for many years abroad, you know in different countries. Congo. Yeah, I went to the Congo to research this as well. And uh, so I was always interested in that, what it feels like to be you know, totally alone in a foreign country. 
I play a fella called Anton. He's the brother of the head gangster in the movie. And he's a bit of a scumbag and a bit of a loose cannon. And he's kind of the weak link in the gang, so to speak, because he's liable to do anything. And um, that's pretty much him. He's kind of the wild card of the, of the bunch. Uh, I play Robbo, and I think Robbo's going be a bit more streetwise, a bit more brain savvy than this guy. Um, and he's a bit more organised um, and precise about the work they, they do, you know. So it's a bit more, a bit more going on upstairs. The brains of the operation. The brains of the operation. Absolutely, I don't want to say that, but yeah, that's exactly what I am. <laughs> and um, well, I'm sure it's great fun working together. What's that like? It's the first time we worked together, but it's going yeah. well. I got the opportunity to interview Patrick Bergen and Adrian Dunbar on their upcoming film based on the life story of James Connolly. We caught up with them in Liberty Hall, where they are currently performing in the play A Trinity of Two, based on the life story of Oscar Wilde. Did you know a man called Alfred Taylor? He was not an intimate acquaintance, but yes, I did know him. How often did you visit him? I'd say about six or seven times, and all usually to afternoon tea parties. Did he used to do his own cooking? I don't know. I don't think he did anything wrong. I haven't suggested that he did. Well, cooking is an art. Oh, another art. Welcome to Liberty Hall. Thank you very much. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. <laughs> That's great. Thanks very much, first of all, for joining us. Um, Pleasure. From your very busy production, A Trinity of Two. Uh -huh. um, how is it going? It's going excellently well. Uh, we've, it was a short production, short rehearsal, short run, three weeks rehearsal, three weeks uh, run. We could probably have, have uh, had five weeks rehearsal and a five or six week run because the crowds have just been immense in the last uh, week or so. And I know Liberty Hall would like us to run a bit longer, but I think we can't. They just had to fit it into our yeah. mutual schedules. You know? um, you're playing the, the colourful Oscar Wilde. Yes. How is that going for you? It's going great. Um, he's an interesting character to play. I mean, lots of people know what uh, Oscar's like, or they have an idea in their head what he's like. So you have to kind of um, fulfil, at least fulfil that expectation in the audience. But you also, I think, is a as an actor, as an artist, you have to try and push the envelope slightly and uh, find some new things for an audience to understand about the character, you know, exactly. so that you bring them somewhere else and show them some new sort of colours and contours to the personality. So hopefully we're doing that as well. I mean, there's no doubt the play is so successful. Um, and I believe you're going to be working together again on something. What yeah. does that project involve? Well, we're hoping to... Uh, there is a, a project uh, based on the life story of James Connolly, that we've, uh, that we've uh, Patrick and I hope to be working on. I hope to direct the film, and uh, Patrick will be playing James Larkin, uh, probably, hopefully next year. It's a, it's an aspect and part of Irish history that uh, has been, has certainly been touched and, and talked about a lot by uh, uh, artists and playwrights, but uh, specifically uh, the the labour movement and the uh, the life of Connolly has not really been exposed and as, as explored as, as uh, it might have been. There's a, a very good script written by Tom Stokes and Frank Allen and uh, we're in the process of raising the money. So that's uh, an ongoing project and sometimes you know you don't want to put the, the evil eye on it by talking about it too much but uh, you know I'm very hopeful that that's going to happen. Well that's all for now and I hope you enjoyed the show. Until next time.